Good evening, everybody. Joe Joseph here. Tonight, I'm joined by my good buddy, Gwen Caldwell, and my cohort in crime, Popeye from FederalJack.com and down the rabbit hole. Yeah. And to start off the show, I'm going to read some of a very important document of ours, the Declaration of Independence. And you will understand why I'm doing this, because what happened today has got me so mad that I can't stand it. So, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its power in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Very interesting that today the Senate passed a bill that makes, <laughs> makes it legal to arrest a United States citizen and to detain him indefinitely without due process. And this was a bill introduced by John McCain and Carl Levin, both treasonous dogs. It says, defying a veto threat from President Obama, this is the Washington Times, the Senate voted Tuesday to preserve language that would give the U.S. military a crack at al-Qaeda operatives captured in the U.S., even if they are American citizens. Led by Senator Carl Levin, the Michigan Democrat who chairs the Senate Armed Services Committee, who should be shot and hung, senators vote 61 to 37 to preserve the language that gives the military custody of al-Qaeda suspects rather than turning them over to law enforcement officials. We are at war with al-Qaeda, and people determined to be part of al-Qaeda should be treated as people who are at war with us. He and Arizona Senator John McCain, the ranking Republican on his committee, had struck a deal earlier this month on giving the military priority custody while allowing the administration to waive that and give civilian authority priority if it deems the waiver is in the interest of national security. The White House and its Senate allies ob objected and tried to block the changes and said, calling for the issue to be studied further. They argue giving the military priority could complicate investigations into terrorist suspects in the U.S. and said it opens the door to indefinite military detention of U.S. citizens. Quote, we're ignoring the advice and the input of the director of the FBI, the director of the intelligence community, the attorney general of the United States, said Senator Mark Udall, Colorado Democrat, who led the effort to block the compromise. The White House earlier had threatened to veto the bill over the provision, saying they amounted to an effort to micromanage the war on terror. Quote, any bill that challenges or constrains the president's critical authorities to collect intelligence, incapacitate dangerous terrorists, and protect the nation would prompt the president's senior advisors to recommend a veto. And so it goes on and on. Now, let me, um, let me first clarify. The bill, did not, uh, the, the bill did not pass. What happened was is they voted on cloture of the bill, and basically they said no. We're not changing it. Yes, we're, we're ending debate on it, and 
that's it. So they have a, a, a X amount of time before the vote actually goes down on it. But they voted. Okay, so we haven't forcefully anally raped you yet with no lube, but it's coming and you're tied down coming. to the bed. So stay tuned because here it comes. Right. Exactly right. So they're giving us forewarning that this is happening. Well, you know, and I, I guess, I guess, I guess that's supposed to be a good thing, right? Because if they, if they, if they ease us into it, then, hmm, uh, you know, everything's all right. Hey, it gives them like 30 hours to get the, their PR guys out and actually tune it down. Now, uh, Gwen, I mean, you're familiar with the Patriot Act. And I the am. Patriot Act... The Patriot Act can do that, but see, there, the, the, there's still some sketchy language in there about posi comitatus, even though a lot of people say it's suspended. If you actually read the Patriot Act, it doesn't necessarily suspend posi comitatus, but what happens is now they're, now they're taking this out. Now posi comitatus doesn't apply if this passes because the United States is now a battlefield, you know? Right. Well, you know, I think it's time, boys and girls, that we all put on our big boy and girl panties and uh, object in a way that they understand. I'm pissed. Yeah, I am too. I am absolutely I'm really bes- pissed. beside myself. As if the Patriot Act isn't enough. These freaking asshats have the freaking gall to come up with something like this. I mean, well, you're an is- effing terrorist. So's Gwen. Shit, I'm a terrorist. We're all, play we're, all, we're all effing terrorists because we use our minds and we think outside the box. Okay, uh, That's how they label us. Everybody that doesn't blow the, the current president, it doesn't matter if it's Bush, Obama, you know, or whatever other New World Order stooge gets in power. If you don't blow him and do everything he says and say, yes, government, oh, please, I'll do anything. Don't hurt me. You're a terrorist. Okay? you breathe in the wrong direction, you're a terrorist. You homeschool your kid, you're a terrorist. You wipe your ass left from right, left to right, maybe instead of right to left, you're a terrorist. Uh, do we got? Do we have time to play the clip from Rand Paul? Um, we might have. You know what? We should wait till because we, we probably don't. Let's, okay, let's, yeah, we'll wait till after wait the break. Because Rand, as soon Rand as we Paul come back from the it. break, yeah. I'll play it. Come back in. I'll just. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Rand Paul today, addressed this today. Four. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and and. I tell you what, he actually pointed out some very interesting um, ways the government classifies people as a terrorist. And you, well, look your at jaw- look at look at the Southern Poverty Law Center. Look at the MIAC report. This is not new stuff. They've been defining terrorists, and it's everybody, everybody. But since 1933, we've had the Trading with the Enemies Act. And that came from a foreign corporation of the United States, which, you know, so we've always been an enemy. So now all they're doing is fine-tuning and lubing us. That's right. No, they most certainly are. They're not even using lube. They're just, it's like spit, prison lube. (laughs) <laughs> that, that, that's what we get. We don't even wait with any like KY. I mean, that's that's how these scumbags look at this. And you have John Scumbag McCain laughing. <laughs> Traitorous piece of shit. As a veteran, I am. Yeah. I don't even want to lump in the same category as him. He's not a vet. He's a turd. Yeah, he's Ugh. a turd. You know, even even uh, what even what's her face? What your uh, your hero there? What's what's her name? Uh, the, re- the Republican, uh, she's a mouthpiece for the Republican. She even called John McCain a douchebag on the air. Oh, and man, man Coulter. Man Coulter. Yeah. Stay tuned, folks. When we come back, we'll uh, hear from Rand Paul and take. Uh, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit more. So stay tuned. You're listening to Freedom Link Radio. I'd like to thank everybody that uh, takes the time to email email me about uh, and having suggestions and and recommending guests is awesome because it gives me some ideas for future broadcasts and I appreciate everybody that does that the email address is the freedom link at centurylink.net the freedom link at centurylink.net and before the break we were talking about this illustrious bill that will protect us that will make us safer and uh, one of the ways they want to do that is by indefinitely detaining american citizens 
without due process. So, Rand Paul today discussed this on the floor of the Senate. Uh, and he stated, and you'll hear him say, exactly what the government deems terrorist activity or terrorist behavior. Popeye, if you please. No good and well that someday there could be a government in power that is shipping its citizens off for disagreements. There are laws on the books now that characterize who might be a terrorist. Someone missing fingers on their hands is a suspect, according to the Department of Justice. Someone who has guns, someone who has ammunition that is weatherproofed, someone who has more than seven days of food in their house can be considered a potential terrorist. If you are suspected by these activities, do you want to have the government have the ability to send you to Guantanamo Bay for indefinite detention? A suspect, we're not talking about someone who has been tried and found guilty. We're talking about someone suspected of activities. But some of the things that make you suspicious of terrorism are having food, having more than seven days of food, missing fingers on your hand, having ammunition, having weatherproofed ammunition, having several guns at your house. Is that enough? Are you willing to sacrifice your freedom for liberty? I would argue that we should strike these detainee provisions from this bill because we are giving up our liberty. We are giving up our the constitutional right to have due process before we're sent to a prison. This is very important. I think this is a constitutional liberty we should not look at and uh, blithely sign away to the executive power or to the military. So I would call for support of the amendment that will strike the provisions on keeping detainees indefinitely, particularly the fact that we could now for the first time send American citizens to prisons abroad. I think that is a grave danger to our constitutional liberty and I advise a vote to strike these provisions from the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield back my time. Big government Republicans and Democrats were busy shredding the last vestiges of the Constitution. Senators John McCain and Carl Levin want to declare, want to enact a law that would declare the entire United States of America a battlefield for the military. They're talking about inserting the army into domestic law enforcement. Senator Lindsey Graham, who supports this bill, says, quote, the homeland is part of the battlefield, and people can be held without trial, whether an American citizen or not. I guess he hasn't read the Constitution recently. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Douglas McGregor joins us yeah. now. Colonel hold McGregor, that, as, hold that. as always, welcome back to Freedom Watch. Thanks, Judge. I must tell you, I was up... Now, <laughs> these, these people, folks, these people, they answer to us. If you remember... I read the Declaration of Independence, parts of it, and <laughs> they get their power from the consent of the governed. That is us. We're their bosses. And, and, and you have to understand that it is our job to hold them accountable. They're not going to hold themselves accountable. We've seen this, and I'm going to highlight and showcase tonight just how much they don't hold themselves accountable. But this is how, this is the power grab. This is how they're going to enslave us. All these FEMA camps, what the hell do you think they're for? And for those of you that don't think that it, it could happen, I think Joe's just exaggerating, okay, for... The loser skeptics, or excuse me, quote unquote wannabe skeptics that want to say Joe is exaggerating or anybody else could be exaggerating about this. Remember what the attitude and the prevailing comments were of the pilot and the gunner who were flying that Apache gunship and shot up that van with the kids in it, and they weren't even insurgents. They were just going to pick up the injured people, and it was just some some dude with his family who saw people injured and was just trying to help them and they shot the van up and they killed everybody but the two kids and but, but the two kids one of the kids had a stump you know he was shot through the stomach i think one of them ended up dying and uh, one survived okay 
and they and the, the guys on the ground were like, "There's kids in the vehicle. There's kids in the vehicle." You know, they were screaming and everything else, and you could see it right on the video. The, and it was the the WikiLeaks helicopter gunship video. What was the yeah. prevailing comment that everybody kept replaying over and over again? Well, you shouldn't bring your kids to a battlefield. Well, they just brought the battlefield to your children, ladies and gentlemen. So guess what? Your kids are now the same cannon fodder that those children were with this act. You can have your front door kicked in and be black bagged in the middle of the night. And you know what? Th- how, how freaky was it? Did you, guys, did you guys see those MTV commercials a couple years back with um, yes. the martial law commercials that MTV was going to yeah. air? I mean, they yes. did air them, yeah. But but yes, how that that is what this is showcasing, isn't it, Gwen? Yes. Anybody who thinks that there is not an event coming needs to pop their head out of their rear end because they're not doing this for nothing. They've got a bigger plan, and all this is is plausible deniability. Well, I am, uh, <laughs> I am quite, quite disappointed that there isn't more uh, outrage over this because, <laughs> I mean, at what point, at what point do you, as an American citizen, as somebody who has been given these rights, not by a man – or men, but by the creator himself. Wh- what is it going to take for you to stand up and say, hell no, we're not going to take it anymore? What's it going to take? What's it going to take for the American public to see that, hey, we outnumber these people like 800,000 to one? Uh, those are pretty good odds. They've crossed every line in the sand for uh, years now. And I keep thinking, oh, where are these uh, big patriots that are always masturbating with their big guns on YouTube? uh, Blabbing about what a uh, big militia they're a part of. Where in the hell's the militia? Where are our men in this country? Why don't you stand up and do something? We don't have men in this country anymore, Gwen. All the men lost their testicles, and now they're willing to let their wives get groped in front of them at TSA. That's why I said I don't fly, dude, because I watch a guy even try to touch my wife, and I'm going to go to jail because I'm going to take him and, like, three other people out before they have to hit me in the throat with a taser because I'm not going to – I'm going to go – I'm just going to lose it. I'm going to go ape and – Someone's going to get punched. You're not going to touch my wife. Now, if I was walking down the street and I tried groping your wife, right, you would react the same goddamn way. So what is wrong with people? It doesn't make sense. People have no balls anymore. It's disgusting, dude. When we come back, I'm going to showcase some more tomfoolery by our non-representing representatives. Stay tuned. We'll be right back gentlemen it's very important to understand that we as human beings have free will and that it's so important so important to grasp that free will that you have that understanding it's it's also important to understand that even if jackbooted thugs take you they black bag you they do whatever You can still be free. You don't have to consent. You don't ever have to consent and still be free in your mind and spiritually as well. Because just because just because they have you physically, they cannot cannot take over your mind and they cannot take over your spirit. That's it. Can't do it. That's yours and yours alone. Do not consent. So Joe Lieberman, he uh, writes to Google, Hey, Google, please ban terrorist content. And this is, uh, this is CBS Connecticut, actually WTIC 1080 AM. 
In the wake of news that terror suspect Jose Pimentel was operating a jihadist blogger site, Senator Joe Lieberman is urging Google to implement a system that bans terrorist material. Oh. Last week, Lieberman sent a letter to Google CEO Larry Page on behalf of the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Government Affairs that called on Google to ramp up its efforts against terrorist material on the blogger platform. Uh, Pimentel's hate-filled writings and bomb-making instruction links were littered throughout the website www.trueislam1.com. Let me stop right there. What makes federaljack.com what makes that special could, Popeye could they make, could they label you a terrorist just by what you put out the information they could but my I'm not on blogger we have our own thing so they can eat me but we're, that's, we're that's eat just one that, you know, just that's just around this that's just blogger right well, no, but we, we are change is a perfect example. They used to be run out of the blogger thing. They're not anymore, but uh, they used to be run out of uh, the blogger format. And what would happen if he viewed We Are Change, any of the We Are Change organizations, as terrorists? Or you get one of these opponents who, quote-unquote, doesn't like them for whatever, whether it's a personal reason or they're just some government scumbag, and they go and they flag. It's, it's BS, and i got to give credit – I, I can't stand Keith Olbermann, but he even called out because Lieberman is using the excuse of this quote unquote terrorist that they arrested in New York last week Bloom, that Bloomberg arrested, and he had a a like a terror blog on Blogger, so Lieberman's using that as an excuse to try to you know get them to you know look this you know the most recent terrorist blah 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 blah. Even Keith Olbermann is calling that out and saying that that was a complete false operation it was a fake terror plot quote unquote fake terror plot when you're getting called out by when i consider part of the mainstream but when they're calling that out that's how you know it's fake you know what i mean right and it was blatantly so fake that they only talked about it for like a day and a half and then nothing gwen your best guess how many by percent how much of a percent would you say are real legitimate terrorist attacks None. I haven't seen one legitimate one yet. Amen. And, and I'll tell you why. Because when the news comes out, um, as soon as there's, uh, you know, within 24 hours of every one of these alleged terror attacks, we find out that the CIA or, or more prevalently the FBI is involved. They're involved in um, selling them the items that they need, prompting them, telling them to do it, making them believe they should do it, and then they are arrested. But you know what I think is really happening is I think these are just actors. And I think once they're arrested, they quietly go away and they get a new look and they get sent to some other place to raise hell for their agenda. I, I, I mean, the whole world is a stage. It's, these are all actors. The mainstream media, uh, are, they're, they're very specific. And um, you, you think that the news isn't all the same. You watch a headline on every single, I don't care if it's liberal or conservative uh, or not, you are going to see the same headlines repeated verbatim on every single channel. They right. bought into it. They've sucked into it. And that's what they're selling you. They're telling you who your enemy is. They're telling you what you should believe. They, they are the talking heads that are told every morning there's a conference with all the bigwigs at all of the main news what they can say and what their spin supposed to be on the news. Guaranteed. I I totally agree, and um, my problem is not only do you have our clandestine services going in and doing this kind of stuff, but you also have our foreign policy that compounds the problem because here we are going overseas 
forcing our will upon other sovereign nations to <laughs> and and forcing them to change and in most cases some places didn't want to change take a uh, case in point libya gaddafi brought water to the desert he took oil revenues and turned it around and gave it back to his people they didn't have to pay for electricity they got uh if they purchased an automobile they got half of it from the government half the price that they got funded from the government cuz it was using the natural resources to strengthen you know they, they they use the resources for home which is great now i'm not saying that gaddafi oh. wasn't a wasn't a uh, you know a prick but hey that's what it is go gwen gaddafi uh, their pet peeve. They, people have to understand Gaddafi's country produced only 2% of the world's oil. Right, minuscule. Right. We, have, we, we have more oil in the Bakken formation in North Dakota than Libya ever thought about having. So this isn't about, people go, oh, it's about research, it's about the oil. Bullshit. It's not. It's about he told the IMF to kiss his butt. And he wanted to trade his 2% of the world's oil in a real currency that had some value. The banks in Libya were forbidden to charge interest. Forbidden. Oh, and you know what? If they wanted to grow organic food, they got given organic seeds, tractors, and the land to grow it on. Imagine that. So he, he basically just told the big boys to kiss his butt and so their response was okay well IMF sends their NATO troops in you know with the blessing of the Vatican you know the three city states three city you know the city countries on the globe bunch of asshats they're retarded absolutely right. retarded and if you think they're not going to come after you think again Think again. Absolutely right. And to, to make things worse, right, for the globalists, the powers that be, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, all of those dastardly fiends, he was going and spreading this knowledge to the rest of the countries in the African Union in an effort to make them more free, more sovereign, more independent, utilizing their natural resources to strengthen their position in the world so we can't have that now can we and we certainly can't have a little country like libya going and spreading something as poisonous as that especially when he he needs uh, currencies backed by uh, a tangible asset like gold or silver or whatever can't have that so they took him out of power and they gang style murdered him. And if you don't think they wouldn't do it to us, you're sadly mistaken. Last segment of hour number one coming up, folks. So stay tuned. You're listening to Freedom Link Radio on the Orion Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back. So you want to talk about real terrorism, folks? Let's talk about real terrorism, okay? Because getting involved in another sovereign nation's internal affairs is terrorism. That's what it is. By, no by legal definition. By legal definition, yeah. it is. We do not Our legal have definition. Any, we have no business getting involved in Syria. So if we don't have any business... Well, let's just get our buddies to do it. And uh, Kurt Nimmo of Infowars.com writes today, Libya redo. France and Al-Qaeda assist free Syria army in Turkey. Oh, boy, oh, boy. News of France's efforts to arm and train anti-Assad rebels in Turkey is all over the alternative and foreign media, but suspiciously absent in the establishment media. Milliet. A major Turkish newspaper reported last week that France has sent its military training forces to Turkey and Lebanon to train the so-called Free Syrian Army, or FSA. 
The FSA is supported by the British intelligence asset, the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Al-Qaeda-infested National Transitional Council in Libya. Quote, the report comes as an earlier report had revealed that the British and French intelligence agencies have reportedly tasked their agents with contacting Syrian dissidents based in the northern Lebanese town of Tripoli in order to help fuel unrest in Syria. <laughs> Imagine that. Reports also said that French intelligence agents have been sent to northern Lebanon and Turkey to build the first contingents of the free Syrian army out of the deserters who have fled Syria. So here we have it, folks. The United Nations uh, putting forth a resolution that, imply, that, that imposed a, a no-fly zone over Libya that authorized uh, member states to support rebels, defended armed insurgents groups, removed Gaddafi, and eventually used the mercenaries to murder him are now up to the same thing with Syria. And the only difference that we have with Syria that we didn't have with Libya is Russia. Russia is all about or, or hip to the game, we'll put it that way. And so these Russian warships have now entered Syrian territorial waters and are offloading, as we speak, some of the most advanced anti-aircraft missile batteries in the world. Why? Because they said, eh, you try to enforce a no-fly zone on another sovereign country, they have every right to shoot you down. And who are we to, to, to stop Syria from doing it? If anything, we're going to help them. So we'll see how all this goes. But that's real terrorism, folks. We have no business, none, in Syria, in Libya, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Iran. Nowhere. What the hell do we have 20,000 troops going to Australia for? Terrorism. That's why. Gwen, what's your thoughts on this? My thought is, is that we need to start using the law to our benefit. The phone calls, the petitions, the protests, none of them have been effective. So I think what we need to do now is we need to start filing Title 42s in federal court for constitutional violations and malfeasance of duty of everyone who violates the Constitution. Period. Um, they they take an oath to uphold the Constitution, even though they are only the board of directors for the corporation. They're not really there to represent us. But nevertheless, they took that oath of office and they violated it. Therefore, we can take action against them because now we've been harmed. They've caused a harm to the entire country by doing this. And I think short of that, we, we don't have any recourse and we can just run them into the ground and let them use up their pensions fighting lawsuits in federal court for violations of the constitution and then maybe they'll stop or leave the country you know hide, hide in a cave I don't know what the hell you do you know I, I, I don't where I, do you go <laughs> where do you go yeah. you go to some other country it's not going to be an English speaking cop that you know, violate your rights. It'll be some whatever country you go to. It'll be that country's main language, and it'll be the same thing. It doesn't matter. It's a new world order, so we need to do something about yeah. it. And we're really where 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 the resistance is going to start here in America because we have a better fighting chance than any other country. And if we can do it here, then the other countries will follow suit because then they'll see no, that Chris the real Americans have taken America back. You know, Chris Steiner said that, um, that we have to find an attorney that, you know, a diligent attorney. We don't need an attorney. Um, we absolutely do not need an attorney. All we need are signed affidavits and just start filing class action Title 42s and defend ourselves. We, we, we're not retarded. We can speak for ourselves. The only thing attorneys do is make sure you don't get anything on the record so that you can't take it to the Supreme Court. Yeah, attorneys you know, and, don't work and, and, for you anyway. 
They're, they work. No, their, their, their officers attorneys, have the court. Cops and judges are all part of the law society. None of us are part of the law society. But they are all subject to their own laws and statutes and all other crap. We actually are not. We give that up, though, when we sign the ticket that we get from the police officer or, you know, whatever. You get a summons issued or whatever, and they force you to sign it. By you signing it, you're saying that you will represent the physical corporation, which it, the corporation is what they're actually going after. So if you know law, you don't need a lawyer. Just go get Black's Law Dictionary and start to read it so you can understand how admiralty law works. Right, know but, your understand, rights. but understand also. And understand and, and that's definitions. It. Right. Well, knowledge oh, yeah. is power. The verbiage. The, the you have to understand None your rights. Right. Knowledge is knowledge is power. People need to understand that. But remember too who you're dealing with. When you enter into the court system, it's kind of like being a sheep going into a den of wolves. So that's why you have to arm yourself with the knowledge in order to disarm these people because they don't they don't respect the law. They don't care about the law. They trample on the law. Look at these lawmakers. Do you think it's lawful to make the United States a battlefield to arrest citizens and, and not give them due process? That's not lawful. And if it's not a lawful law, then you don't have to obey it or abide by it. Yeah. Oh, I think that the other thing that we do is get a copy of the Road of Office, and we can sign it, have notarized, and then have it delivered, registered mail to them, so that we are now in a private contract with them to uphold their oath of office. And as soon as they violate it, they breached their contract with you, and then you can go after them personally. For the damage that they've, uh, the harm that they've caused you, you know, um, I, I get I get Chris's drift in the in the chat room, but you know we were very effective in Minnesota. It took a year. It took eight to twelve of us sitting in the courtroom whenever we had free time, taking notes, watching people have their constitutional rights violated by people that took an oath of office. Would be saying, "Hey, we'll sign a, we'll sign an affidavit saying we witnessed your constitutional rights be violated." Filed twenty three lawsuits, never one of them. But the county went broke. It went seven hundred thousand dollars over their legal budget. So the county commissioner had a little together with boys and told them, "You need to stop violating the constitution." You're you're breaking up pretty bad, Gwen. So let me she let me give a recap. Of, I'll try to. I'll try to. That's cool. Yeah, let me sure. let me give a recap of what she was saying. Basically, when you file a Title Forty Two, you're not looking to actually win. I mean, that'd be nice, but what you're actually trying to do is to bankrupt the municipality and or the state that you're doing it. You want it. You want to impose a ton of legal fees every time they have to go and defend a Title Forty Two. They have to have their attorney go in and defend it. And so consequently, if it's a small municipality, they tend not to be able to, um, oh, shall we say, uh, afford it after a while. As a matter of fact, they start to tell the, uh, let's just say, the sheriff or the deputies or whatever to back off because huh, we're, we're really uh, getting a lot of legal fees here and we can't, uh, you know. We can't, we can't handle that. So just like they do it, taxation by citation, where they break laws and violate our rights, pulling us over without reasonable suspicion or probable cause, you can get them right back doing the exact same thing. Hit them in the purse. Hit them in the wallet. That's how you do it. You don't necessarily have to win... In the in the um, the way that we know, winning in court, we can win by hitting them where it hurts. And with that said, that's the end of hour number one. So stay tuned, folks. Hour number two coming up, and there's so much more to talk about. So sit tight. We'll be right back. It's hour number two of Freedom Link Radio. I'm Joe Joseph, joined tonight by Gwen Caldwell 
and Popeye from federaljack.com and down the rabbit hole. And so, uh, you know, last hour we talked about just the egregious trampling of our rights by these morons in the Senate and the House of Representatives and the executive branch and the judicial branch and our state governments and our municipalities. I could go on and on. But, um, you know, there's a, uh, there's a blog – and it's called the blur- the burning platform dot com, and they wrote a uh, piece called "Comfortably Numb." It says, "As I observe the zombie like reactions of Americans to our catastrophic economic highway to collapse, the continued plundering and pillaging of the national treasury by criminal Wall Street bankers, non enforcement of existing laws against those who committed the largest crime in history, and reaction to young people across the country getting beaten, bludgeoned." shot with tear gas and pepper sprayed by police, I can't help but wonder whether there's anybody home. Why are most Americans so passively accepting of these calamitous conditions? How did we become so comfortably numb? I've concluded Americans have chosen willful ignorance over thoughtful, critical thinking due to their own intellectual laziness and overpowering mind manipulation by the elite through their propaganda-emitting media machines. Some people are waking from their trance, but the vast majority is still slumbering or fuming at erroneous perpetrators. Both the Tea Party movements and the Occupy Wall Street movements are a reflection of the mood change in the country, which is a result of government overreach, political corruption, dysfunctional economic policies, and a financial system designed to enrich the few while defrauding the many. The common theme is anger. Frustration and disillusionment with a system so badly broken it appears unfixable through the existing supposedly democratic methods. The system has been captured by an oligarchy of moneyed interests from the financial industries, mega corporations, and military industrial complex, protected by their captured puppets in Washington, D.C., and sustained by the propaganda peddling corporate media. The difference in political parties are meaningless as they each advocate big government solutions to all social, economic, foreign relations, and monetary issues. And that is www.theburningplatform.com. It continues, but you get the gist of what he was trying to say. So, um, guys, lobbying. How big of a role does lobbying play in the in the degradation of our rights and our personal sovereignty. Go ahead, Gwen. Uh, well, I'll go to I I, th- uh, I I am I, I do not think that they, uh, we elect our representatives. The lobbyists, if they want to lobby them, lobby them. As a person, not with money, not with trips, not with corporate money, not with campaign funding, not, I I mean, we've got to get this back down to the people and we cannot do that as long as our representative government is nothing more than a foreign corporation. So we need to, we need to get rid of the lobbyists. We need to get rid of the whole corporate structure that is governing us they're they're not a legitimate sitting government they're a corporation and as long as we have a corporation and our elected representatives are the board of directors and we're just the shareholders we are not going to get anything different and we don't deserve anything different either that's right your thoughts popeye uh, I think lobbying should be banned, and I think one of the big look look at APAC, one of the biggest lobbies out there. And who do they protect? Not us. They protect a foreign nation and their interests and their own personal interests, not yours, not mine. And there's hundreds, if not thousands, of other lobbies just like that. M- most of these politicians become lobbyists when they get out, and they're all above the or- law. Or take they the were money lobbied out of politics. before they got in. Yeah, take it out. 
Exactly. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, what are some ways that we could make like elections more fair? Or what are some ways that you can um, do that? You know, do, do you go you back to the Jeffersonian way of doing doing things like, um, you know, those guys only took a little stipend and I don't even think Jefferson took his. I have to go back and double check that. But, you know, back then they really didn't take any money. They did it because they they already had enough money to survive. They felt that it was their duty to go take care of because, you know, business. They were better educated. They were, you know, they were well off. And they they thought it was their duty to do that stuff and to right. be politicians. Nowadays, but, these asshats want to be in for thirty years and want to make two hundred and fifty grand a year. No, there should well, be a and limit. then they get two hundred and fifty grand a year for the rest of their damn lives That's in a big exactly, pension another, package. They, they'll screw a veteran, blow a guy, guy gets his leg blown off in a bullshit war. They don't want to even give him his ve- veterans benefits. Got to fight tooth and nail to get him. But these asshats leave and they get paid for life. It's it's unadulterated BS. Even Anthony Weiner, he got kicked out. And he gets a check. It's, it's really got, ridiculous. That's, that's got to stop. You know, they they need to get you know fifty thousand dollars a year or whatever the average. Um, you know, the census, they always do an average uh, median income, and that's exactly what those representatives should get, whatever the average median income is in, in their district or their state or whatever, and that's what they should be paid. They should get Social Security just like everybody else, and if they don't like it, don't run. Yeah, well, here's here's something that I kind of thought up, and, uh, you know, what if, if, if you want to donate to the election process, then why not donate into a, you know, okay, you're a a Republican. So you donate to the Republicans. All that money gets pooled into a pot, and then each candidate gets an equal amount. Then it's a level playing field. I I just can't, I, I can't see how, I mean, think about it. Why is it that that independents have absolutely no freaking chance whatsoever in politics today. It's because it takes an enormous amount of money to to be elected because you got to pay off the politicians. You got to pay off uh, the mainstream media to give you any sort of airtime. You got to pay it all off. It costs a lot of money. And then you know, Joe, the only way- well, the only way you get to people these days is through the boob tube. Well, see, and that I was just going to make that point. We need to quit allowing the media to be a platform for telling us who our enemies are, who our candidates are, because um, they've done. I, I mean that. The globalists thrive, and they're, the, if they haven't refined any art, they have refined the art of divide and conquer. And then they've got their minions and their talking heads to, to um, do their, uh, their whole propaganda puppet show for sure. us. And we need to stop allowing media to be a tool for, for that kind of... Uh, information. Well, first segment over already, and David Caruso is telling me that it's time for a break. So we'll be right back. This is where he puts Don't. on his shades and says, But okay. Gwen, they are all tools. And he- so let's highlight a little bit just how they try to bamboo. Today on CNN Money, there's an article saying S&P downgrades dozens of banks. Among them, Bank of America, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, and J.P. Morgan Chase. Do those ring a bell, folks? Here we have all of this rosy talk. Oh, well, Black Friday was the best Black Friday in history, where over 223 million people took to the stores, and and uh, purchases were up 6.6% over last year. Well, let's break that down a bit. 
6.6% over last year. Inflation's going up at 11% annually over for the stuff that you're buying in the store. <laughs> so because it didn't keep up with inflation, it actually went down. But they don't tell you that, you see. The economy, folks, is in the doldrums. If you don't notice, because either you're unemployed, underemployed, barely making ends meet, because even though you have a good job, your salary really hasn't gone up, but inflation sure has. So they tell you all of these things. Well, GDP is going up at 2.2% this quarter. What the hell does that mean to you when you're suffering and struggling? And then you see things like this. S&P downgrades dozens of banks. Why? Why on earth, Popeye, would they downgrade dozens of banks? Why would they do it? Because that's, a, that, that's inner <laughs> squabbles. The S&P is full of shit, Joe. They're, they're part of the problem. You know, you realize this. Standard & Poor's and Moody's and all them. All these little we credit rating agencies, you're all part of the same mafioso scumbag. They are. Absolutely. They are indeed. Joe. But I will tell you this. It's all a sham job, isn't it, Gwen? Oh, my God. Thank you for <laughs> asking that question, Joe. All right. This is the deal. As I'm choking down a chocolate here. Um, okay. No money is created except by your signature on your little line that's microprinted that says authorized signator on your check or on your credit card little. Now, there is no money in the bank. Well, what has happened in my humblest opinion is that uh, people got their credit cards taken away because they couldn't make the payments and so now they're having to use cash if they buy anything or they have to write checks. Well, that money is not created until you write a check. So the banks don't have any money. Well, if you're not spending any money, if you're not writing any checks because you don't have money in your checking account, then they can't resell your check which becomes a bond, as soon as they receive it with your signature on it, it's a watermarked document with a border, and it is a bond that they sell, and that's how they make their money. So they're losing their criminal asses because you don't have any money to spend. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, is... Um do you think they can keep the sham up for much longer? I think it's in free fall. I think it's because, literally in free fall. Because they're, they're rolling out QE3 here in the next couple of months. They want to buy $565 billion worth of mortgage-backed securities. What does that mean to you, Popeye? Uh, let's see. When I hear mortgage-backed securities and I hear we're going to use your tax dollars to buy them, uh, to me that translates to, oh, we're going to give money to our banks or scumbag friends. We're not going to tell you who we gave it to. Kind of like the TARP bailout. Same stuff that's, all that, over That's what again. it reminds me of. It's the same bullshit all over. But why do people keep falling for this? Seriously, why? Why, 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 why? Why does why have we not woken up and said all right this, enough is enough man like we told you no the first time you did it anyway now you did you know QE2 now you want to do QE3 what the hell is wrong with you people you know why why do we have to do this why are we why are we devaluing the dollar well you know Bernanke has his reasoning and he's he's a very smart and no he's not he's a scumbag let's face the facts these people are traitors let's stop being a bunch of pussies face the facts hang the people that are responsible clean the mess up we can get through it in about 6 to 8 months and we can be done before 2012 amen to that you know Joe is that the, before um, is that other... before or after uh, is that before or after um Nibiru hits and we all die. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. We got 13 months until Planet X kills everybody, so we can at least change you. the government, right? 
That's right. At, at the very least. Go ahead, Gwen. Uh, well, I think another thing that people don't understand is that the United States has been bankrupt um, and held in receivership by the Federal Reserve Bank since then. And so the you know, the, the corporation of the United States doesn't really have any say over the money at, at all. It, it's laughable. Um, the Federal Reserve does whatever they want, whenever they want. They do not answer to anyone because they're a private business. They're a private corporation that is the oversight for the finances of the United States corporation because they're bankrupt. You know, people don't, they don't get, they keep going, well, they can't do that. Well, hell yeah, they can. That's why they're doing it. Because they don't understand because they got lied to it, you know, in their public education about what the hell's going on. Do some damn research. Sure. You know, quit knowledge, watching knowledge is power. stars or whatever the hell. Absolutely. You know, we, knowledge, knowledge is power. And, and, and you know, we, you know we, we can complain all we want. We can stop this by eliminating the Federal Reserve and the IRS. They're private corporations. The IRS, not one penny of your tax money goes to fund one thing for the federal government or the, the corporation of the United States. Every single penny of it goes to pay the interest on the debt to the Federal Reserve Bank. It's a collection agency for the Federal Reserve. You know, quit paying it. Quit signing a contract with them to pay it. When your employer gives you that little W-4 form that's your contract to be a voluntary taxpayer, tear it up. Quit volunteering. You know, Absolutely. instead of going, oh, why are they doing it? Well, they're doing it because you keep signing your name on the dotted line. Yeah, because Quit you're participating. You, there you go. It's all about the participation. You know, we participate in paying income tax when, and having it withheld from our checks. But we're complicit. We're funding these idiots to go ahead and make us enemy combatants. We're funding it. We're paying for it. Well, you don't have to. Simply go. Get a W-4 form from your employer and check exempt. And then take that money that you you, you got to check your pay stubs, folks. You check and see how much they take out every two weeks. You take that money, put it aside. When it comes time to pay the tax man, write him a check. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Not much longer to go for this edition. Photocopy your Radio. middle finger and mail it in with the check. That's right. Or your. You don't even have to send a check. That's right. We'll be back. Stay tuned. You know, we heard uh, during the break IRN Radio News talking about American Airlines filing for bankruptcy today. And I find it interesting that, you know, when all these companies file for bankruptcy, the first thing they say is, well, we need labor concessions. They make too much damn money. Well, that's good. So, again, the cost of food, gasoline, utilities, yeah, pretty much anything that's important to you, it's going up at an annual rate of 11%. But you make too much, folks. You make too much. You know, standard of living has gone into the freaking toilet. You know, the white picket fence and house, the American dream, is really becoming a dream. And uh, it really unattainable. And so I have to ask, at what point in time do we opt out? Do we say no mo? But that time has to come. I mean, folks, how in the heck can this continue to go on in this country? You know, this is not this is not a third world country. But it's turning into one fast. Isn't it, Popeye? 
You mean we're not a third world country? I thought we were already no, there. No, we're not a third world. No, sir. Are you sure? Because have... third world countries usually have military rolling around on their streets, and we're pretty close to that. We're, uh, if not first, we're, getting we're there. Thir we're incognito. Oh, but we still have running water and, and, and electricity, Popeye. That's right. so we're, we're So we're still, you know... Oh, that's only a few there. years away from ending. Our electrical grid is probably about <laughs> 60 or 70 years old. And the, oh, the, all the crap they put in the water, it probably would be uh, healthier to drink camel piss. Um, yeah. We're going to have to do a little well, study that, on that. That's a new we'll get back to you, folks. That's a new industry that we could start and um, mm, you know, kind of bitch piss. slap the powers that be. Bottled camel piss. Yeah. Mm. Have you Cleaner tried than, Monster? Uh, your drink Have you tried Amp Energy? <laughs> well, move on over. <laughs> wanna, because... You want to be a billionaire? You want to be a billionaire? Somebody take my idea and run with it. Just make sure when you make a billion dollars, you remember who gave you the idea, and you you, you know you, you you know take care of Popeye. Buy me a house or something. I'm just kidding. Anyway, somebody with money. If you guys if you guys hear this, here's an idea: build desalinization plants desalinization plants build them all over the coasts of the country and pipe them in to like yeah, right. big plant you know big like you know whatever storage facilities slash um you know Reservoir. routing stations and then you can route it to to cities and then they can route it through their systems and everybody would no one would have to worry about Fresh, clean drinking water. You would oh, but the terrorists could destroy a pipe. Oh, oh. Well, then do your effing job and protect it instead of running around chasing fictional characters that don't exist. Um. So I got a good idea, right? If we're going to do that in America, how about we boil the water with nuclear energy, and then we'll just harp them. And then <laughs> and we'll have like. Why don't we just have everybody in the country piss in it too before we drink it, and at the same time <laughs> defecate in it? Because you know why not? Well, pissing in it is better than the fluoride and the lithium that they want to put in it. For God's sakes, I mean, sickening. It well, kills I mean, me. When people agree with the lithium in the water. Well, oh, you know, and, and now that. President Obama has signed a bill allowing us to kill and consume. Horse meat. So, Yay. you know, I, I figured the reason he's doing that is because between the FDA and Monsanto and Cargill, uh, they, don't, they don't want us to have anything else to eat. Nothing fit for human consumption, asshats. That's why I only eat buffalo meat. I know it's buffalo meat. I don't eat beef anymore. And by the way, for you people that eat, still eat fast food, just so you know, you should go look up... Uh, the FDA, who is as crooked as all get out, okay, told um, Taco Hell, otherwise known as Taco Bell, <laughs> that they cannot call what they put in their tacos beef because it is not beef. It is more fillers and nitrates and fake crap than beef. Mmm, 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 mmm. <laughs> Yeah, yuck! It's been a while I don't since that I've crap. Had it. Yeah, no, it's been a while since I've I've had anything like that. But I'll tell you, um, you, you I think we were talking about this before the show, weren't we? About obesity, how uh, they're taking uh, children away from parents because the kids are too obese, but you can't afford good food because it costs too damn much. So you have to eat and the, you the can't crap. And you can't grow it or they'll come and pour bleach on it or throw you in jail and, and abscond all your food. So you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. But right. we have a Declaration of Independence that says that we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I think consuming good, healthy food would define my pursuit of life and happiness. Well, I'll tell you this, <clears throat> if things keep going much longer, and this is all part of that Codex Alimentarius. As a matter of fact, I'm, <clears throat> I'm kind of um, at a loss because I, 
they were supposed to take like all the vitamin supplements off the shelves, but there was such a backlash from that that I doubt that they'll ever be able to truly get away with it. But the way they get away with it is by giving you food with absolutely no nutritional value. And, oh, at the same time, probably pumping you full of crap and chemicals that uh, manipulate DNA, uh, sterilize you, yada, yada, yada. And the good stuff, like um, a buffalo meat, for example. How much a pound is buffalo meat, Popeye? Well, depends on where you go. Uh, down here where I get it, it's like uh, nine ninety nine a pound. So, you know, obviously, you, you cook sparingly with it. You don't... You know, you learn to eat a little differently. Uh, but like my wife and I went food shopping today, and we only just went to pick up the bare essentials, and it still cost me almost a hundred bucks. Yeah, you know, and that yeah. would have been like fifty bucks a couple of years ago. It's ridiculous. It's it's to the point where um, you have to be you have to bring in sixty seventy thousand dollars a year just to support two people to to live on the basics and not live like kings. But live on the the bare essentials, the bare minimums. It's it's really getting out of hand. Uh, and again, everybody, all these old people, veterans, and everybody were like, "Well, we got a three percent increase in the cost of living this year." Yeah, uh, but we're going to take a six percent uh, uh, increase. We're going to, you know, it's going to cost you six percent for your yeah, Medicaid. Yeah, the, the, the cost of living so, is so going to go six ten percent. So it doesn't really do you anything anyway. It's like pissing into the wind. Uh, you're, I'm, I'm pissing into a headwind, and it's, I'm wondering why it's getting all over me. You know, I'm like, yeah. hello, you know what right. I mean? That's, that's and, what this country's doing. What? Why are we getting wet? I don't understand it. Because we're pissing on ourselves into a wind, dick. Why don't we you know, turn the other way, piss with the wind? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but idiots. And then uh, my other question is, if the dollar is worth 2% of what it was in 1913, how much farther... Do um, do we have to go till we have money that's totally worthless? And is that possible? And the second thing is, what's a dollar? Oh, I went there. I went there. I went there. What is a dollar? Because in all actuality, you're holding a Federal Reserve note, which in Black's Law Dictionary, a note is a promissory note. So. Go to your bank next time, folks. Go to your bank and ask them to redeem your Federal Reserve note for the twenty dollars uh, that's face value, or whatever, and see what see what kind of look you get. <laughs> oh, you mean to make, you want to make change? No, I don't want to make change. I would like my twenty dollars, please. I'd May like I have some? twenty silver dollars, please. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is. It's a giant scam. It's a giant scam. And they are making us slaves. They're making us slaves because, because look at this. Look at American Airlines. And that's just one of many companies. Oh, Joe, labor costs. Going through the roof. Can't take it anymore. Uh, I hope every airline goes bankrupt. Every airline that has TSA should go bankrupt. Amen to that. I, I no pity for them. Wow, time flies when you're pissed off. Last segment coming up, folks. Stay tuned. You're listening to Freedom Link Radio on the O'Brien Radio. Welcome back, folks. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for uh, tuning in tonight and listening to uh, me rant a bit. And I'd also like to thank you, Gwen, and Popeye for... Joining me on the show tonight and ranting a bit, but it, but <laughs> Always it, you a know, pleasure it, to rant. but it's it's so important. It's so important that don't thank me, thank my wife. Off. That's it. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. She's got to. She's the one that gives up the two hours a night for me, and I have to say, she's the like. If anybody wants to thank me, don't thank me. Thank Mrs. Popeye because she's the one that gives up a lot of her time for me. So. Wow, she must be listening or something, man. Because uh, <laughs> nope, she's in the uh, she's in the other room. She can't hear me. You're but, in uh, massive she, ass kiss mode. Nah, she deserves a <laughs> shout out. She really puts up. She you know she gives me up for at least you know eight hours a week 
for uh, radio shows at the very least. She does. She does so. deserve a shout out, but you're trying to get a piece and you know it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's mind's always in the gutter. Yeah, me? C- come on, man. I mean, in the Navy, you know, that's that's the way we roll in the Navy. I, what, what's, so, that, what's that one? What thing that you guys used to say? It's not queer if it's on the, if it's, no. It's uh, queer what was it? Here it's not gay if it's underway. <laughs> Boo. Hey. <laughs> I'm speaking, just busting speaking, of, speaking of that, right? Did you guys hear or see the Reuters article today about laptop Wi-Fi said to nuke sperm? Yeah, but what happens? Is it, did that make the kids like mutants or did that make them more fertile? I think the answer to that is yes. I don't know. <laughs> it said, uh, what do you, wow, you'd work. You really could fit right in with the government. You should be like a, an advisor or something to the president. Uh, it says in a report uh, in the venerable medical journal Fertility and Sterility, Argentinian scientists describe how they got semen samples from 29 healthy men placed a few drops under a laptop connected to the internet via the Wi Fi and then hit download. Four, four hours later, the semen um, was well done. A quarter of the sperm were no longer swimming around. For instance, compared to just 14% from semen samples stored at the same temperature away from the computer. Uh, a 9%, and 9% of the sperm showed DNA damage, threefold more than the comparison samples. The culprit? Electromagnetic radiation generated during wireless communication. Oh. So... Now, you mind you, we are now entering an age where everything is practically wireless. And we know what happens when you get radiated. And it doesn't matter what kind of radiation it is, whether it be gamma or X-ray or electromagnetic. It's radiation. It's not good. It's bad. It's going to screw with us. <laughs> no, it's not. Man Coulter said on Fox News... Oh, boy. That radiation is good for you, and all the people over in Japan should be happy because now they won't get cancer. Man, they screw got, like, that, Heffa. Free radiation treatment, so, you know. <laughs> screw and that, man Heffa. And man and her Adam's apple are always right, so. Man, she does have an Adam's apple, doesn't she? I'm just kidding. I think she's detestable. Ugh. But I think she does have an Adam's apple. Matter she of fact, does. I'm going to look the next time because I think you're right. That's why I call Dude, her Man Coulter. She could have went under the, you know, had an adedictomy procedure and uh, and just become a Man Coulter for real. I mean, I, uh, I, I'm sorry, man. I, uh, I'm having a hard time with the Man Coulter uh, type of viewpoint. I'm having a problem with the. That's the same. Ignorance. That's the same. Twit that said, I wanted to use another word, but I'll be radio friendly. That said, um, that there was no asbestos at Ground Zero. Yeah, exactly. The air really? Is what are all the first responders dying of cancer? Really? Oh, yeah, that, she said that, this on Fox you, News with Eric yeah. Bowling. I did a, I did a whole, I did a whole thing debunking it. It's called debunk, debunking Fox News's Fox News and Popular Mechanics hit piece on 9/11 Truth, and it's up on my YouTube channel. But. uh she uh, like I tore it apart. I made it like an hour and in twenty minutes long or whatever it is to to show you. But she did they, right around nine eleven. She was on Fox Business Network with that Wall Street scumbag Eric Bowling, uh, two useless pieces of sperm. Okay, you know you don't want to get just as a quick side note. How come you know all the all, all the eugenics? Those two, you know, like out of all the sperm. In the in, you know the millions and millions of sperm between the two of them, though they were both the fastest swimmers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like that's the awful. best. That's the best that their parents had to offer. Ugh. Anyway, um, her and Bowling were ripping on 9/11 truthers, and she's like, "Yeah, there was you know there was no asbestos in Ground Zero. That's what, or uh, in the towers. That's why they burned so fast and then fell down." And I'm like, no asbestos, really? I, maybe you should go talk to the first responders about that, man. Maybe you should or, go ask them. Or take a look at the fact that, that the buildings had just recently been condemned because of the cost of asbestos abatement. 
Uh, the, the, the but cost don't pay attention asbestos. to that. That don't. No, of why, course why not. Why you paying attention to that, Joe? That's they that's were called fact. White elephants. The buildings were called white elephants. But that's fact. Like, why are you uh, paying attention to fact? Damn it! You're not supposed to pay attention to that sort of thing. <laughs> you're not I supposed to pay attention what. to that. Why are you? Why are you paying attention that the buildings <laughs> turned to dust completely? All the steel, everything. I mean, steel beams that were you know super super thick. At the you know turn to dust where you could inhale it in your lungs, but don't pay attention yeah. to that. Nah. All the mercury that was in the air from the the bulbs, all the glass, everything was turned to a fine powder. But no, there was no uh, and there was no asbestos. No. Don't I mean? Come on, stop, dude. Stop. You know why she says that? And I'll tell you why. Because Christy Whitman, the head of the EPA at the time, I remember vividly, comes yeah. on the uh, airwaves and says, "Don't Governor. worry, everybody, the air." Is safe to breathe. Well, what is and, man like butt buddies with Christy Whitman? Well, perhaps they could be diking it out. You don't know. Well, it's just well, I say that as a as a you know a, an, an expression. Like, are they? You know what I mean? Like, why would she? I mean, I know why they would just use her as a talking head, and you know whatever they they pump her head with, whether it's drugs or they just plug her, unplug her from the wall and send her off. Or who knows what the hell she is? The point is, she's a twit. And she runs. She walks around running her mouth, and then she she calls John McCain a douchebag today. I mean, John McCain is a douchebag, but come on, if that's not the most contrived argument between two morons, that that's more. <laughs> <laughs> like it, that's like that's like you know, the pot calling the kettle black. That's like this jerk off thinks this jerk off <laughs> is an idiot. Who cares? They're both friggin' idiots. You know, ooh, Aaron Coulter called John McCain a douchebag. Ooh, MSNBC bleeped it. Ooh, ooh, bread and circus. Look over here. Don't pay attention to the bill that's going to make you all terrorists. Pay attention to these two jerk-offs arguing. I mean, John McCain, somebody needs to unplug him, okay? Seriously, they need. it's time to put him on an ice floe like they did with the, like the Eskimos do with their, with their elderly. It's time to put him on a piece of ice and kick him off to sea. Cheney, just unplug the battery, dude. Seriously. You know, you guys, did, does it, is there anything about the fact that it took only like 10 days to get this bill through Congress? Uh, I mean, normally these things drag out. They have committee meetings, you know, all of this stuff. In yeah, 10 unless it's, days, like, it's I mean, civil rights. <laughs> then, then, it's, then it know, takes it, it was high gear, Glenn. Teeth. I mean, it's just mind-boggling to me, uh, and and the concern I have about that is that they're trying to push this through, and I think it's because they're expecting an event. They know that something's coming down the pike, that could and be they the case. want their ducks in a row. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Hey, Gwen, it's we're almost out. We're almost out of time. P- plug your show, will you? Oh, yeah, decaf tomorrow night, blogtalkradio.com forward slash morning brew. Join Neil and I. We're going to have a great show. We always do. Oh, <laughs> you can hear us rant some more. Yeah, please. I mean, go and visit and uh, rant away because, uh, you know, everybody should be ranting right now. Shouldn't just be Gwen and Popeye and myself and Uncle Ken in the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> it should be it should be all of us all of us should be raising hell at the steps of the capitol building at the steps of the white house and taking our just country start back. writing editorials everywhere yeah write editorials Absolutely. everywhere call well, things by the real name too that's right that's right it's up to us folks We are the vanguards of the Constitution. Without us, the Constitution has no teeth. It's just a piece of paper. We, the people, have to give it the power. And we can't sit on the sidelines anymore. They've gone too far. 